It always feels good when you are appreciated. SLT Non-Stop Broadband. Free loyalty data added as you stay connected. Link at the time of the day, you will be able to get the money. Mom, what is it? Let's go. Tonight, tumbling down, Ambilipitia High Court Judge Gihan Pilipitia interdicted based on recommendations by the Judicial Service Commission. Tangled web, CID reveals slew of phone calls during alleged Garnier Francis abduction timeline with CID and Lake House implicated. Government analysts report on Swiss staffer's mobile phone ordered. D-Day. Speaker gives green light for tabling CBSL bond scam report in Parliament. All that and much more coming up on First at Nine this Tuesday, the 21st of January 2020. PC nicking cut winner. Anti gel mouthwash summoning and a close up gel lecker. Story ek start karana. Hi. Hi. From Ada Derana, this is Ada Derana First at Nine. Live. From Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to First at Nine. I'm Dhamni Kekmai. Let's start with the local stories. Now, in light of the recent developments with regards to the coronavirus epidemic in China and other countries, chief epidemiologist at the epidemiology unit insists that there is no need for the public to panic as maximum precautions have been taken to contain the rise of the virus within Sri Lanka. He also requests tourists to get themselves checked by qualified medical practitioners if they exhibit any symptoms of the virus and to reveal all information regarding their travel history. So that will aid doctors in their treatment. Following reports of increasing cases of the coronavirus strain on the Chinese mainland and recently detected cases in Thailand, South Korea and Japan, Chinese authorities confirmed today that the virus can be transferred through human contact, increasing pandemic fears. The revelation was made by Chinese officials following reports of more than 200 cases of infection, including medical staff and the fourth death reported today. The virus is believed to stem from the same large family of coronaviruses that spawned the deadly SARS virus that claimed many lives years before. With increased tourist movement during the Chinese New Year holiday period, the spread of the virus could prove to be costly to Sri Lanka, with increased Chinese tourists choosing the country as their holiday destination. Releasing a statement last week, the Ministry of Women and Children's Affairs, Social Security, Health and Indigenous Medicine said that officials at the Bandaranaik International Airport had been directed to take necessary action to detect and isolate possible cases on arrival. We spoke to the Chief Epidemiologist of the Epidemiology Unit, Dr. Sudat Samaravira, who outlined specific details regarding the procedure in treating individuals suspected to be infected with the virus. Because of the travellers coming from uh, here and there, there is the risk of uh, transmitting this type of illnesses to other countries. Even in Sri Lanka is at risk, but Sri Lanka has taken the maximum effort and uh, precautions to contain if such cases occurs. So our main hub, the Bandarnag International Airport, the health desk is on alert. And if a person is coming with these type of symptoms, the respiratory symptoms, like high fever, cough and cold, they will be screened at the airport health desk to exclude or to identify whether this person is having the illness that can be suspicious of this novel coronavirus infection. If it is suspected, they will be isolated at the National Institute of Infectious Diseases or IDH hospital and treated and managed. In this context, we don't have to panic so that uh, every precaution has been taken to contain the, to not prevent the spread of the disease as well as that we would like to request all the travelers from other countries if a person is uh, developing respiratory illnesses uh, after their travel 
please seek uh, help treatment from qualified doctor as soon as possible uh, also reveal your travel history we request uh, from the general practitioners or doctors treating the people if the person is coming with influenza history or the having the symptoms of respiratory illness with fever cough and cold please uh, inquire about the travel history if there is any travel history to a country that suspicious then uh, this type of people should be immediately referred to the government hospitals for further management amidst the growing pandemonium regarding the increased spread of the virus within china china's top leaders warned low level authorities not to cover up the spread of a new coronavirus following state media reporting a death toll of 6 people contradicting the chinese health officials figure of 4 Meanwhile speaking at a media briefing Professor Gabriel M Leung of the Faculty of Medicine at the University of Hong Kong insisted that public health authorities recognize a super spreading event in its very early stages before what he termed as going explosive Ambilipitiya High Court Judge Gihan Pilapitiya, one of three members of the judiciary implicated in the controversial Ranjan Ramanayak audio recordings, has been interdicted with immediate effect. This comes in the wake of recommendations submitted to the President by the Judicial Service Commission following several complaints filed by public interest groups in the past weeks. This decision also comes just after a day of sitting judge rec recorded a statement at the Colombo Crime Division in connection with the conversations. The controversial phone recordings have had a serious impact on public trust in the judiciary following the explosive revelations in the past weeks. MP Ranjan Ramanayake is currently in remand custody following his arrest where he faces charges of interfering in the judicial process. Azam Amin, the Sri Lanka-based BBC Sinhala journalist, recently implicated through a recorded phone conversation with former State Minister Ranjan Ramanayake, has resigned from the international media outlet with immediate effect. The controversial phone conversation exposed collusion between the MP and Amin, who appear to discuss strategies targeted to damage the Sri Lanka Pudjana Peramuna's public image in the run-up to the presidential election. A recording of a phone call between former state minister Ranjan Ramanayake and then BBC Sinhala service journalist Azam Amin was leaked on social media over the weekend. In the recording the duo are heard discussing the coordination of both media releases by the journalist and the MP's parliamentary and public statements designed to manipulate public opinion over the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna in the run up to the presidential election. Amin who spoke to other therena confirmed that he is no longer employed at BBC Singhala and that his resignation was tendered in order to protect the integrity of the organization. BBC's head of communications Paul Razamuzain when approached for a comment on the issue confirmed that Amin no longer works for the organization adding that quote editorial impartiality is the foundation of the BBC's global reputation as trusted news source and this cannot be compromised unquote. Meanwhile, interdicted former Badegama magistrate Dammika Hemapala, one of the three members of the judiciary implicated in the leaked phone conversation, gave a statement to the Colombo Crimes Division today, which lasted for over three hours. In this backdrop MP Ramanayake who is currently in remand custody facing charges of interference in judicial affairs over several other recorded conversation implicating former and sitting judges made an appearance in parliament today where he addressed the house of the subject of the leaked recordings Mama පොදු ජනතාවට මම මේ කතාව කියන්නේ ප්‍රථමයෙන්ම මම මුළු හදවතින්ම අවංකවම සමාවිලනවා දූෂණ හෙලිදරව් කිරීමේ සටනෙදී මේ හඬපට ජාතියට හෙලිදරව් කිරීම නිසා පෞද්ගලික හානි වුණු සෑම මිනිස්සෙක්ටම මේ පාර්ලිමේන්තු මන්ත්‍රීවරියක් වන හිරුනිකා ප්‍රේමචන්ද ඇතුළු ඒ සියලු දෙනාගෙන්ම මම සමාවිලනවා මා ළඟ ඇති තවත් රටට අනාවරණය නොවුණ සියලුම සංවාද අද මේ සභාවේ මා සභාගත කරනවා නිර්භීතව मालगती 
මොකද එයාට කියන්න බෑ මට කතා කළේ නැහැ කියලා මොනවද කතා කරපු කියක් තියෙනවා එහෙනම් මම නැවත නැවතත් මහින්ද රාජපක්ෂ මහත්මයාටයි අතිගරු ජනාධිපති ගෝඨාභය රාජපක්ෂ මහත්මයාටත් කියනවා කොමිසමක් දාන්න දෙයිනේ දාන්න මම ෆයිල් පිටින් එන්නම් හැබැයි ගෝඨාභය මහත්මයාගේ හඬ පටන මාලග නැහැ මම ඇත්ත කියන හැමදාම මේ රටේ ජනතාවට කරපු අපහාසයට මේ පඩිසම් දීලා තියෙන්නේ මේ රටේ ජනතාවට කරපු මඩ මේ රටේ පුද්ගලයන්ගේ කරපු චරිත ඝාතන වලට තමයි තමුන් වහන්සේට පඩිසම් දීලා තියෙන්නේ කල කල දේ පල දීලා තියෙන එකයි මේ රටේ බෞද්ධ ආගමට අපහාස කළා කතෝලික ආගමට අපහාස කළා තමුන් වහන්සේ මමයි අදාන අපේ කතෝලික ආගමේ මරියදු ജനറൽ පාර්ලිමේන්තුව නියෝජනය කරන සියලුම මන්ත්‍රීමණාජ ලබා දීම යෝග්‍ය බව මම තරයේ විශ්වාස කරමි. ඊට අනුකූලව ශ්‍රී ලංකාරික විගන්න වාර්තාව අද දින සභාගත කිරීමට යෝග්‍ය බවට මම තීරණය කරමි. දැන්ටමත් ආරම්භ කර තිබෙන සහ ඉදිරියේදී ආරම්භ වීමට නියමිත අධිකරණ ක්‍රියාමාර්ග විපවත්වාගෙන යාමට මෙම තීරණය කිසිදු ආකාරයකින් එකි අධිකරණ ක්‍රියාමාර්ගයන්ට බාධාවක් හෝ බලපෑමක් සිදු වීමට අවකාශයක් නැති වන බවද මාගේ විශ්වාසයයි. මේ වාර්තාව හරහා අපි රටේ මහජනයාගේ ධනය මොනතරම් ප්‍රමාණයක් පැවති පාලනයන් විසි විනාස කොට තිනවාද කියන එක පිළිබඳ නිලධරව වෙනවා කියලා අපි විශ්වාස කරනවා. ඒ නිසා මේ පාර්ලිමේන්තුවේ මේ සතියේම දින දෙකක විවාදයක් ගරු කතානායක තුන මේ සඳහා අපිට ලබා දෙන්නේ. ඒක මට තනියම ගන්න බෑ ගරු මන්තු මම පක්ෂ නායකතුමන් කැස්සිමක් කැඳවලා අපි ඒ ගැන සාකච්ඡා කරමු. ලයිබ් එකේ ගරු කතානායකත් පිටපත් කීයක් වගේ ඉදිරිපත් කරනවා. එකයි තියෙන්නේ අපිට එක. එකයි. ඔව් නමුත් අපිට අද දවස ඇතුළත බැරිද පිටපත් දෙකක්වත් ලයිබ්. මං නැත්නම් ගරු කතානායක මුදේ කවුරු හරි ඒ වාර්තාවේ සඳහන් වී තිබෙන කෙනෙක් අරගෙන දවසම කියවන්න පටන් ගත්තු. ඒක නම මොකක් හරි ඉඳන් අද අපිට ඒක බලන්න හම් වෙන්නේ නැහැ. ඔව් ඒ වගේ දේවල් Moving on with other local stories, the government analyst was ordered by the court today to produce a report on local Swiss embassy staffer Garnier Bannister Francis's mobile phone. What's more, the criminal investigation department also informed court of a web of telephone calls which had taken place during the time period when Bannister was alleged to have been abducted. The CID identified the characters involved in the conversations to be Garnier Bannister Francis. Dharisha Bastians who was employed at Lake House IP Nishant the Silva Lake House chairman Krishant Kure and former director of CID Shania Besekar The criminal investigation department today produced another report to court on Swiss embassy staffer Garnier Barista Francis who is remanded for falsely claiming that she was abducted and harassed When the case was taken up today Colombo Chief Magistrate Lanka Jayaratna ordered the government analyst to analyze and submit a report of the suspect's mobile phone The CID meanwhile informed court that the suspect had initially complained that her alleged abductors questioned her on IP Nishanta Silva It added that investigators have uncovered details on several key telephone calls made between the 10th and 30th of November last year pertaining to the case The CID went on to say that an individual named Darisha Bastians who was employed at the Associated Newspapers of Ceylon Limited also known as the Lake House had maintained contacts with Garnier Barista Francis by using a SIM card registered under the name Lakna Tarindu Paranamanna It noted that Darisha Bastians had contacted IP Nishanta Silva who is currently in Switzerland on several occasions and she had also been in touch with the Lake House chairman Krishanta Kure via telephone. The investigators also told court that Krishanta Kure had been in touch with the former CID director Shani Abi Sekara. What's more the CID also informed court that IP Nishanta Silva had been in conversation with its former director Shania Besekara for around 9 minutes while at the airport prior to his departure to Switzerland. The CID went on to say that a web of telephone conversations is observed during the time of the alleged incident between Garnier Barista Francis Darisha Bastians who was employed at Lake House IP Nishanta Silva Lake House chairman Krishanta Kure and former CID director Shani Abe Sekara 
Furthermore, Lake House employee Darisha Bastians had set off for Switzerland on the 21st of November, while IP Nishanta Silva did the same on the 24th. The court was also told that Lake House Chairman Krishanta Kure too had set off for Switzerland on the 5th of December last year and none of them have returned to the country. The court decided to take the case up again on the 11th of next month. We'll see you again after this very short break. Bear with us. Welcome back. You're watching First at Nine. Now, a German court has convicted a Sri Lankan man accused of being an accessory to the murder of former Foreign Minister of Sri Lanka, Lakshman Khadragamar, back in 2005. He is convicted for providing late Khadragamar's assassins from the terrorist group LTTE with crucial information. The regional court in Stuttgart concluded that the defendant, previously identified only as Navadindan G in line with German privacy rules, had tipped off members of the LTT about Khadragamar's whereabouts. It is reported that the court sentenced him to six years and ten months imprisonment with room for appeal. Prosecutors say that the defendant, who applied for asylum in Germany in 2012, was a member of the LTT intelligence unit. Now, a Dubai court has slapped three Sri Lankan nationals hefty fines after they were found guilty of insulting Islam on social media. The three persons in question are reported to be security guards of a five-star resort aged between 28 and 34. The Dubai public prosecution has accused the Sri Lankan trio of contempt of religion through posts on Instagram and Facebook. College Times says that the prosecution referred, or referred them to trial pursuant to the anti-discriminatory and hatred law and the federal penal code. The case dates back to the 19th of May last year and the trio are reportedly fined 500,000 dirhams each, which equates to over 24.5 million rupees. Putlam District UNP MP Shant Abesekar, who was remanded for violating bail conditions on a case filed in 2004, has been granted bail by the Chilau High Court after more than three months. The MP is one of the suspects of a case filed before the Chilau High Court over an incident of illegal possession of firearms while being a member of an illegal assembly in Chilau in 2004. The Chilau High Court imposed certain bail conditions on the MP, which required the accused to appear at the Chilau Police Station on the last Sunday of each month. However, when the High Court had called for a report from the police, it had been uncovered that the suspect had violated his bail condition on certain days. When the case was taken up for hearing on the 10th of October last year, the court ordered to place the parliamentarian in remand custody. State Minister of Tourism Promotion Affairs Arundigo Fernando identifies the lack of direct flights to Europe as the main stumbling block to tapping its vast tourist market. The State Minister adds that discussions are underway to provide subsidies to the national carrier and other private airlines if direct flight operations to Europe resume. Also addressing the media, Chairperson of Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority Kimali Fernando says that rather than being restricted by a budget for tourism promotion at its outset, the cabinet will be left to decide on the budget after being informed of the comprehensive plan. The media briefing was also participated by a French and Belgian media delegation. For us, you know, what is really important is to have strong tour operators who fight a lot and spend a lot of money on the office and to make very good offers to French tour operators. And more offers you will offer to the French market, more tourism will come here. Sure, it will be a very good opportunity to have a direct flight from Paris to Sri Lanka. But it's not so easy as we think because, yes, the plane has to be minimum 80% full. Also, Air France can have the opportunity to organize with Sri Lankan Airlines a flight, direct flight. Uh, no French clients, they, they come with Emirates or Etihad. I think we are targeting about 4,000 tourists from southern holidays within another maybe next year and following winter. That means we need about another one and a half years to achieve this. It's very important we touch this European market and one thing uh, that we lack is direct connections, the flights. Now since this uh, Sri Lankan Airlines is in the same ministry, we have started 
the discussions with the national carrier and also with other private airlines to restart at least two flights from Germany and one of the destinations in uh, Europe. We have given a proposal from the Minister of Tourism that if they start one of the European flights that we will come forward and see the possibility of giving a subsidy from the Minister of Tourism. Within a couple of months time I think we can start this again. What is the tourist board doing? I mean just going for fairs and and what is the budget going to be for next year, promotion budget? We've never really had in Sri Lanka a structured promotional campaign. We have to accept that. So now we have made the plan and it will be put to the board next week and thereafter it will go to the cabinet through the minister. And what we are looking at first uh, to appoint a local PR agency and the B2B, B2C in, uh, in uh, destination marketing in we have selected actually eight focused tier one markets and France is one of them, uh, UK, Germany, UAE, uh, India, China. Then we have a tier two category that we will also do some marketing. So we'll first go for the tier one promotion, hoping to reach the bookings for December. Global pr promotion will take a little longer. The promotion budget will be decided. Actually, it's, we don't want to do it that way. We are first going to the cabinet saying, this is what we need to do. And then they will let us know, do they want to do it in a staggered basis or do they, they want to do it one shot? It has to be an authentic, consistent story running minimum three years, frankly. Some other ambassadors, you know, did exceptionally well to uh, promote the country when uh, Sri Lanka tourism was lagging behind, you know, at that time. But are you going to have anything, anything new about this? Each and every high commission, we want some officers dedicated to represent Sri Lanka tourism in this high commission. Hereafter, there will be a, a proper guideline for them from the president himself and some targets too. The International Monetary Fund has predicted global economic growth at 3.3% this year and 3.4% for 2021, which is a slight downgrade of its October predictions. This latest predictions was released in the IMF's World Economic Outlook Report for 2020 and 2021. The International Monetary Fund's World Economic Outlook for 2020 and 2021 was released yesterday, predicting global economic growth at 3.3% this year and 3.4% for 2021. This is the marginal downward revision from its October World Economic Outlook, which predicted 3.4% for 2020 and 3.6% for next year. This prediction, however, is at odds with the United Nations World Economic Situation and Prospects report released last week that predicted global growth of 2.5% in 2020. Meanwhile, the report has upgraded China's growth forecast by 0.2 percentage points to 6% for 2020. It highlighted positive signs that could shore up market sentiments, such as trade and industrial output, appearing to bottom out, looser monetary policies being resorted to by major economies, the end of the trade war with the signing of the US-China trade deal, and weakening Brexit worries. The report, however, warned that geopolitical tensions, social unrest and trade frictions may still weigh on the global economy. The IMF also says that considering the current currency and financial space, multilateral cooperation and more balanced policy mixes are vital to uplift economies and prevent downturn risks. In addition, the report says that increasing financial resilience, exploring growth potential and increasing inclusiveness are still its top priorities. Now taking a look at the markets, stocks closed 0.14% higher today with diversified John Kills and Holdings and banking stocks pushing up the market. The all share price index closed 8.13 points up at 5,914.33. The liquid S&P SL20 index closed 41.57 points up at 2,826.63. Now here's a brief report on today's market performance. In the bond market, uh, the yield curve remained broadly unchanged with activity levels uh, being limited uh, within volume, mainly because of tomorrow's build auction that is about to take place. If you take the equity market, we saw today the abolishment of the debt repayment levy, which had a big impact to the market. The market turnover was uh, boosted by the major banks with Sampath Commercial and HNB contributing about 47% uh, of turnover. The boost concluded today in positive territory, rebounding from a 
five five day negative skid, mainly boosted by uh, price appreciations in John Keys Holdings and uh, Commercial Bank. So intraday low today of uh, 5,903 points, uh, while the market uh, rebounded mainly in the last hour of trading to close at 5,914 points, uh, gaining about uh, eight points for the day. Foreigners were, however, net sellers with uh, moderate uh, foreign participation. Welcome back. This is First at Nine. Now, U.S. President Donald Trump will be in Davos for the World Economic Forum ahead of his much-anticipated impeachment trial, which begins today. Trump is accused of charges relating to abuse of power and obstruction of Congress in relation to the leaked phone calls between him and Ukrainian officials, where he urges investigations to be commenced into former Vice President Joe Biden. Trump's legal team has denied any wrongdoing and branded the case a dangerous attack on democracy. Even without impeachment, Trump could face controversy at Davos with the World Economic Forum choosing to focus the annual event of the climate crisis. Trump has routinely dismissed these claims. Nevertheless, Trump is expected to address the annual gathering of global leaders with a strong U.S. economy at his back, one that has bolstered the global economy amid economic uncertainty in Europe and other parts of the world. Trump arrived, uh, arrives rather at Davos on the positive note of signing phase one of the trade agreement with China. This has helped cool concerns that Trump's trade war with China could uneven the global economy. Now, former Interpol chief Meng Hongwei is sentenced to 13 and a half years in jail by a Chinese court for bribery. Meng is among a group of growing Communist Party cadres caught in President Xi Jinping's anti-corruption campaign. China's ruling Communist Party said its investigation had found Meng spending lavish amounts of state funds. The party added that Meng also abused his power and refused to follow party decisions. The former Interpol chief has admitted to taking more than $2 million in bribes. According to the court statement, Meng would not appeal, the, appeal against the verdict. Day three of the first test between Sri Lanka and Zimbabwe ended a short while ago at the Harare Sports Club. In reply to Zimbabwe's first inning score of 358, Sri Lanka lost their first wicket for just 32 runs. Angela Matthews and Kusal Mendes steadied the innings, each hitting half centuries. Mendes was caught off the bowling of Victor Nyuchi for 80 runs. Angelo Matthews remained at the crease with an unbeaten 92 before Sri Lanka ended the day's play at 295 runs for the loss of four wickets. And that's it from all of us here at First at Night. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.